Oh, when Pesky came on for that interview from Team Danglers, he was so articulate and confident, and he looked like he really knew what his game plan was going to be coming into this. And same could be said for V Respawn, right? I mean, Ruka felt he had a lot of knowledge, and, and it looks like these teams are just putting in a lot of practice. Absolutely right. And we are into our first round, ladies and gentlemen. So buckle up. It's going to be a rough one as V Respawn on the blue side going to take down Danglers on the red side. We've seen a lot of sonar usage come out. Neither team really getting in there, getting very aggressive. Uh, we are on orbital belt right now, organic belt, I'm sorry, which does have a bit more open play, so not necessarily to the style of Danglers, but I think they do still like this map. Uh, Rukafelf and Stu getting tied up in it, but Stumpy Nub going to come in and find him. Stu will find the refrag onto Stumpy, and things are getting off to a bang. It's a 2-1 start, keeping things real close. Yeah, and it's already off to a quick start here. And you're right, Danglers are very uh, familiar with this map. It was their pick, actually, in Organic Belt, so they definitely wanted to take this on with the first map to, to V respawn and take it to them. But yeah, we heard uh, Rukafelt, he was very surprised that the EU scene wasn't prioritizing that sonar, but we know the NA teams, they love that sonar, they love that shield and that bio pump. So I expect those uh, items to be coming out in, in force here. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel like the Danglers might have picked this one because even though it is, it does have very open spots, there's a lot of cover for them to bounce in between as they fly around uh, and allowing them to get in closer to that close quarters engagement. And we can see there on your screen, Pesky Cashew and Stumpy Nub just meters from each other. They're not very far apart. They like to be there for the refrags, what but Stu going to get a nice shot onto Pesky Cashew. Oh, now Stumpy, Stumpy Nub comes Nub. in with that shield shotgun combo. And there it is, you're already getting what you want. Yeah, that shield combo is so strong. You saw Stumpy Nub just go right into that melee range in his face and take the fight to him. Stumpy Nub is taking a lot of damage yeah. here. You can see him Oof. communicating to his teammate, letting him know exactly where Stu is, but Stu is doing such a great job hiding behind the terrain and slowing things down so that he cannot get refragged. Oh, so Pesky Chu, he has to slow things down and wait for his teammate to respawn here. Yeah, he does need Stumpy here. He's in a pinch. He's got two with him, but it looks like Stumpy's not too far away. More sonar usage coming out from B respawn, but Stumpy gonna come in behind Stu and get a nice shotgun kill. Now he's regrouped with Pesky. They're back on their ones. It's four to three here. We have such a tight round here coming up on the two minute 30 mark. We certainly do. And Stumpy Nub, what a player. He, he's doing a remarkable job right now, getting through the corners, hiding through the terrain and getting as close as he can to VR respawn before they even realize what hit him. But Pesky Cashew does take him out, trading him out, but Stu gets that trade out once again. But VR Respawn are still in a pretty comfortable spot up 6-3. Yes. to three. Yeah, they really are. And right now it's all Stu and Stumpy Nub as they both are 6-2 and two and 4-3 and three with their teammates. Not getting any frags, but they have been there for the support, and that's what's key. Like, you don't always have to get all the top frags. As long as you're supporting your team and those frags come in for the team, it's all good. Uh, and there we go. We see Pesky Cashew finally picking up his first one to help his teammate out. And now we're back to a 1-1 one, one split. B Respawn still in the lead with just two minutes left. And we saw Pesky Cashew there utilizing his sonar in order to find out his enemy in perfect tracking with those Rickle Blasters. I mean, he did not miss a beat, so he got that kill easily, bringing things back for him and his teammates and bringing it closer to five and six now already. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, if... If Danglers can actually recuperate here and get a squad wipe, that will put them in a great position to be in the lead going into the last minute. It's Pesky Cashew in a bit of a firefight with both members of the V Respawn team, but Stumpy's there to provide some cover. He's going to try and get himself into some camouflage there. The communication coming out between the two, and we got some sonar shots in from V Respawn trying to find where the Danglers are. Stumpy Nub with all that armor coming and taking so much damage, already getting very low, but he does finish off the kill. Rukafelt with a quick frag, retrade, and he also gets the second. So wow, V Respawn, Rukafelt bringing them over into a solid lead with eight and six. Yeah, a full squad wipe lead here. So Danglers need to take them both out to at least tie it up, but they're gonna need to gain that advantage unless we're gonna go into another sudden death in round one of today like we did yesterday, Potter. It is really neck and neck right now. No team really taking the full advantage of no, uh, full I agree. lead, but Stu does get taken out by Pesky. I think Danglers are doing a really fantastic job sticking together, even though the, the respawns have been a little staggered with one player going out at a time, but they've done a really good job sticking together Ooh, here. the rocket launcher with the splash damage. Finally seeing that in some space junkies. Yeah. Let's see if Pesky can get this refrag on his on the re respawn member. If he can actually get one out of this contact, then it won't be so bad for Danglers. Right. Yeah, the, that'll bring them back with it one. So if once Stumpy Nub recovers. Oh. But oh no, 30 seconds left, and Stu's gonna find Pesky Cashew with Stumpy Nub finding a quick refrag. But will it be enough? Will they have enough time to find two more frags to bring things to a tie and to a sudden death? But right now it's looking like no. It's seeming that V Respawn are gonna have this one in the bag, but 
You never know. Things could go uh, really Stumpy, bad really fast. Stumpy was on such a roll there, but he just took too much splash damage from that rocket, so he had to reset. And I don't think he actually was able to re, re get gain his health there. He was so low from a prior engagement that he just gets knocked out right then. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, V Respawn will take our first map and go up 1-0 in the series of a best of five. Danglers will have at least two more opportunities to stop this bleeding before things turn in to an elimination and they'll take that second place prize. But I don't really think that we saw anybody, like you said, take any real advantage on that map. I think it was very back and forth, but V Respawn did manage to just somewhat edge out Danglers there overall. It certainly was. It was neck and neck, and we saw both teams really having a similar strategy, right? Is is, is having those bio pumps in hand mm -hmm. and getting into close range and, and making sure that the the this bio pump can be as optimal as possible. Uh, yep. And it just seems that v, v Respawn had had a little bit more of an edge in this matchup, in this map, and this was the Dangler's pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, and so that's gonna be tough to lose, and hopefully they can rec recollect themselves after this because it will be tough to come back from losing that first map, especially when it was your choice because you go into that ve feeling very confident, you know? Uh, but at the same time, I don't feel that uh, the, the Dangler's team was really varying their weapon pickups much on this map. I feel like they very heavily heavily relied on the shotgun and the Rico Shakers, trying to make things happen from range, the Cosmic Ripper here and there, but they really weren't picking up the differentiating weapons like they were against Team Gravity yesterday, which I think is what really allowed them to take Team Gravity in the end was their knowledge of weapon pickups and what worked well in the scenario. You may be absolutely right. So maybe in the next matchup, what Danglers need to do is slow things down. We saw nonstop action in this matchup. As you saw, the map was a little bit smaller. It is a little bit smaller. Yeah. So that action is to be expected. But I think Danglers, you're right. They can slow things down a little bit. Go get some cover and some terrain. Make your enemy sweat it out. Pick up that armor. Pick up the better weapons and so that you can go into these contacts uh, in a more optimal situation. Yeah, fully prepared, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, we should be getting into our next round here rather soon. Um, so the next map is going to be Canyon Chase. Yes. Uh, this is V Respawn's pick of the map, and mm -hmm. this is, again, a very small map. Yeah, but balanced, right? It, it, it has it, a lot like or Organic Belt. It has a lot of open air engagements for long range shots. But if you go inside, go inside that canyon, you know, uh, a la ca Canyon Chase, uh, <laughs> you, you get into that CQC stuff. So I don't think the Danglers are going to mine. But if I do recollect, yes, Canyon Chase is actually one of Dangler's least prepared, least preferred maps. And mm -hmm. so that could play into the advantage of V Respawn here. As this is their pick, they could be looking to go up here in the Series 2-0. It absolutely can. I mean, terrain is different. Things that you can use as cover. A lot of the times these players are using their just muscle memory and, and, and they have to react accordingly. But if they're not familiar with the map, they're not going to know exactly what cover is going to be optimal for them to use. So you're absolutely right. It can be... This might be advantage to uh, re respawn once again. Yeah, and as a former CSGO player, I'm sure you've went through the rigmarole of, <laughs> of learning maps that you absolutely hated just because you had to, right? Exactly. You, you don't have a choice in this competitive environment. If a team bans you know, things that you would pick to supplement not having to play that map, you're stuck having to play it whether you like it or not, and so you better be ready to win on it. Absolutely, and, and it is very surprising to think that uh, the map choices could make play such a huge role in the outcome of a match, but it absolutely does. I yeah. mean, it has to do with confidence of and understanding what angles and what fights you're willing to take and what confidence you have that you're going to be winning those battles, right? So when you have that familiarity with the, with the terrain and with the map itself, you're going to be taking battles that you know you're going to win. So that sort of confidence can really carry you a long way. You're absolutely right. And thank you, but we're going to be getting back into the action. We're here on map two. Of course, it is Canyon Chase, V Respawn's pick. But Danglers are going to be the one getting the opening frag here as Pesky Cashew picks up one onto Stu. And some more damage dealt. Pesky Cashew is not messing around. Danglers already off the bat up 1-0. I like this. This is okay that they got the frag. They slowed things down. They made sure that V Respawn can't refrag. And so much damage oh, done wow. by Pesky Cashew. The quick double frag, this is a quick 3-0 up from Danglers. Yeah, it is. We're hardly 30 seconds into the match, not even a minute even. But yes, that Pesky Cashew pump. and Stumpy Nub had just completed a successful pincer attack to completely squad wipe the V-Respawn team. So things are looking good for them so far on map two. If they maintain this advantage, 
And now you saw Danglers running around the map, Ooh. picking up the optimal weapons, that bio pump pickup from Stumpy Nub, just destroying Cashew there. And I'm sorry, Stu there. And so it's <laughs> it seems that Danglers really are controlling this map. Maybe uh, maybe they've been practicing a lot more than we thought. Yes, they appear to have because Stumpy Nub with another headshot onto Rukafelt. That's another squad wipe. They're just opening up the gap. Now they're walking away with it. So V Respawn needs to do something here. I think at this point, Stu or Rukafelt, whoever went out first needs to wait and recoup with their team before they get singled out again and Danglers just pick them apart one by one. And yes, they have done that. They are back together, so that's going to help. But here comes P Pesky Stumpy. Cashew, or no, Stumpy Nub getting a dirty kill with a shotgun onto Rukafelf. Oh, and he finally gets taken out by Stu. You saw Stumpy Nub such accurate shots with that bio pump. And then afterwards, he's bobbing and weaving and trying to trying to buy time for his teammate to come help him out. Unfortunately, Pesky Cashew didn't. But he is doing a lot of damage to Stu here with that shield, and he takes out Stu. Danglers are already up 7-1. to one. Now Pesky Cashew is going to need a heal, go pick up some armor, and reset so that they can continue to control the pace of this map. Yeah, you see Stumpy Cash or uh, Stumpy Nub there for a moment, uh, guarding that full health pickup just in case any V respawn players were nearby. He's there to shut that down, and it looks like Stu's taking a lot. Yes, Pesky Cashew with that Cosmic Ripper on this map. He is just roasting, folks. That high magazine count, that high rate of fire of the chain gun that he's using is just dirty. But Rukafel finds a kill with Stumpy Nub coming in with the Cosmic with the uh, shotgun there to finish him off on the refrag. It's now 10 to 2. We're looking at a mercy rule here coming up very, very soon. Absolutely, and you know what? Pesky Cashew did exactly what he needed to do. He's drawing out the aggro, drawing out the enemies, making sure that they are shooting him and paying attention because he's throwing out so much damage. And then Stumpy Nub gets into the close range and finishes him off with that bio pump. Ooh, yes. And now V Respawn finding a little bit of footing there as they are able to wipe both Pesky Cashew. Tried to get the refrag after Stumpy Nub went down with that Cosmic rip Ripper, but he was not successful as both re V Respawn members jumped down on him like a bunch of tigers. Now, Danglers, they only need five more points here to secure out and close out this map with two minutes left to go. Stu losing so much at HP and past Pesky Cash, who does finish him off here. With Stumpy Nub will find Rukafelt with the slingshot, a less seldom used weapon that we've seen so far this weekend. But that area of effect damage is nothing to scoff at. You should be using it when you have the chance like this, and you can and you can really use this terrain that's so close together to use that area of effect splash damage to Absolutely. your benefit. Absolutely. And Danglers is doing such a fantastic job yes, controlling sir. the map. They are cons constantly bobbing and weaving. They are taking damage. We respawn. Yeah. They are shooting back, and they're they're trying to get back into this game. But Danglers is doing such a fantastic job. Down, hiding. Yeah, we're <laughs> really, one, they're just hiding. They really are, and they're, yeah. they're one kill away here. It's 14 to 6. We're still a minute and a half left before the round would end via timer, and all we need is the one kill here from Danglers to shut things down here in map two, and that would be two maps where the opposing team wins the other's map choice. Yeah, exactly, and here we are. Stumpy Cash, Stumpy and Pesky Cashew. Wow, what a performance. I feel like this map was a lot more one-sided than that first map. I mean, hands down. Yeah. I mean, the score was just... 5-0, until finally V Respawn got some footing, managed to score a couple of frags, but in the end, Pesky Cashew and Stumpy Nub of the Danglers doing me proud up here in the <laughs> desk, gotta be honest, but man, they are really bringing it to V Respawn. But V Respawn still getting in there, still getting dirty in the mix, and definitely getting the damage, just not falling their way when it comes yeah, to the Yeah, exactly. I mean, V Respawn, we saw them consistently getting the damage done. They were shooting, because sometimes, you know, in this in Space Junkies, it can really snowball out of control. Sometimes yeah. you can't even shoot your gun off before you're getting picked off out of that spawn. But, you know, V Respawn, they did do a good job pulling out the damage, but they just weren't ever able to finish off the kill. So I think that was a little unfortunate from them. But Danglers did a fantastic job making sure that they don't get picked off. Yeah, they really did. They used cover and concealment very well. I think maybe they went with the faster characters there. I wasn't paying too much attention as our action was just nonstop. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely speed and maneuverability played into their advantage. They got some low and high sight lines on them. So they were able to sneak up from an angle that they, their enemy probably wasn't anticipating. Uh, which is always great. But yes, they did much better there. I think that was their wake-up call in map one when they lost, and so they came back with a with a vivacious spirit there, and Certainly. they, like, like we said, just kind of hands down walked away from that one. Certainly. So the next map that we're going to be jumping into here is going to be Skulls and Guns. And again, this is Dangler's pick, and this is going to be a complete opposite of the first and second map. This is a very large map. It's very big. And also, we're gonna, we might be seeing a Rocket Rumble for the first time. We haven't really seen that so, thus far. No, we haven't. I mean, we did see a kill there on map one coming out from V Respawn using the rocket launcher, successfully using that explosive area damage. Uh, however, we haven't seen it much at all this weekend. You're right. Uh, I, I, I expect we'll see a lot of that for some long lob shots when you just want to 
pressure him. Right. But I'll also I'm also going to look for Rukafelt here in this in this round to be picking up that plasma rifle and going for the sniper shots because this is a very large map. This is a very big long sightline map. So that is where that weapon is going to be super crucial. Now, I understand that Rukafeld does like to play the Plasma Rifle, but he likes to go for the speed with the Plasma Rifle rather than rather than what we saw with Axis Monday yesterday of Team Gravity, who like to wait for his opponents to either peek or transition between cover and catch them out in the open. So we could be seeing that not be so successful for Rukafeld here as Danglers are very meticulous about finding routes to get right up on you and take you out that way. I'm just excited to see that plasma rifle, man. Watching these players and they're tracking. You know, I'm so used to tracking on the mouse and mouse pad, right? Right. And, it, it, and it's really the same thing, except now you can see them physically tracking with their hands. And it's so cool to see. It's so cool to see such accuracy with, with the tracking because it, it really comes down to the sonar being giving it's, you the, the information and it you is track super the enemy. Important. Yeah. yeah, it's so great. It's so great to see. Yeah, that, that, I would say that that's probably top of the equipment usage meta is that sonar. I mean, you right. can't, why not use it, right? The more information you have in any of these games we have featured here, the better. So any type of sonar, radar, anything that can help you get an edge on your opponent is definitely useful. But at the same time, your enemy's got the option to use it as well. So just as well as their positions might be compromised, yours may be also and that's never a good thing, so you always got to make sure to keep it moving. And keep it moving we will as we rock into map number three. That's going to be Skull and Guns, and this will be Dangler's pick. So we're going to be looking for them to hopefully hold the advantage, though I don't believe that V Respawn or any are very scared of this map at all. Again, V Respawn will be on your blue side, Dangler's on the red side. And you can see Rukafelt just kind of looking over and peering over that edge, trying to draw out some fire. And Stu is tanking with that shield, but he gets taken out immediately. Now, Pesky Cashew and Stumpy, they need to charge Stu here. Charge Rukafelt and make sure they finish him off, and they do exactly that. Now they have a strong lead at 2-0. They can control the spawns, control the pace, pick up all the armor and the good guns, and really be in an advantageous position moving forward. Yeah, and here comes the shotgun from Stu. He picked it up. He's chasing down Stumpy Nub, but Stumpy's got that shield with him. That's going to help him. But Stu is there with the Cosmic Ripper. But Pesky Cashew there for the immediate refrag of that Pulse Rifle. So keeping things up 2-0, so that's good for Danglers. It certainly is, but Stumpy Nub, he got a little caught out in no man's land. Pesky Cashew wasn't able to help him out that much, so it gave VR Respawn an opening back into this matchup, getting two quick frags. Good thing Danglers had a response, though, keeping them up in the lead only by one, though. You're right, and here we see Rukafelt rocking that rocket launcher that you wanted to see. Now, it does have a, a type of tracking missile, so you, once you fire the rocket, you can aim the rocket and use, you know, kind of fly it to its target, but he was unsuccessful in getting that, and Stumpy Nub will find the pick onto Stu, giving them still a one-up lead over V Respawn here, 4-3. to three. With 3 minutes 30 left, Rukafelt will find a refrag onto Stumpy Nub with the Cosmic Ripper, and things are all tied up here. They certainly are, are, are all tied up once again. Rukafelt with some really smart play coming out. Like you mentioned, they did pull out that rocket launcher, I believe they did get a, a kill with it, and this brings it tied up four to four with three minutes left in the round. You can see Pesky Cashew, though, he has picked up that armor. The yellow bar on the screen there is giving him a lot more confidence to be able to take some more duels. Yeah, absolutely, but we respawn here. They need to be they need to be communicating because Stumpy Nub and Pesky, you can see in the spectator cam, you can see those little speaker icons flashing above their names. That's every time they talk, and those things almost never stop flashing, right? So they are constantly in communication. They are always talking to each other, and that's what's giving them the edge. However, V Respawn has managed to take the edge here as Rukafelt is really carrying right now at five and one. And Stu finds a nice headshot on a pesky cashew. Oh, Stu does take another one, and it seems like V Respawn are edging their way back into this and now they've got the lead by two frags this isn't looking very good for danglers hopefully oh. they don't slow things down here and again stumpy nub is caught out by himself really far away from pesky cashew pesky cashew can't respond there's nothing to react to he's so far away no no he they were communicating i believe stumpy nub told him to stay where he was and try and seek cover try and stay alive until he can get back because but it's not going to work for him. Stu will find him and chase him down with the sonar. Here comes another sonar pop, possibly. Yep, here it is. Stumpy Nub's position is compromised. Rukafelt and Stu will probably be trying to coordinate something here. Unless Pesky Cashew comes in from the backside, which he's definitely doing. He's definitely got that, that possibility coming in from the spawn. They're so focused in on Stumpy right now, this could be this could be deadly for them. It certainly can be. Danglers are scrambling right now. They're just trying to rendezvous and meet back up with each other because they've been separated now here for a bit. Stu, in an engagement, does take down Pesky Cashew. Stumpy with the response. He's got that armor. He's got Rukafelf low. 
Yeah, but will oh, he be able to Rugabelt, nail it? What a shot with that plasma rifle close range. Yep. You mentioned the plasma rifle from Rukafelt in the pregame. You're absolutely right. He's busting it out here. And that's like that's his sixth kill with it. Yeah, yeah, he is dangerous with it. And again, he, he likes to go for the speed kills on the plasma rifle. So he's not always the most accurate shot with it. But when he's getting close, he's not scared because he's still fast with it, which is good for him. He certainly is. And again, we see Stumpy Nub pulling out that shield and that bio pump now once more. Let's see if this is the key to get them back into this matchup because things are getting a little out of hand for them. V Respawn has taken an, an aggressive lead at this point in time. Stu is on the hunt. Oh, but Stumpy Nub! With the quick bio pump into Stu's face. Stu had so much confidence turning that corner. He thought he had that, but Stumpy Nub shuts him down. You're right. And Pesky Cashew picks up a kill on Rukafelt in their engagement, bringing it back to a two-point lead for V Respawn. It's totally still controllable by Danglers. They can at least bring it to a sudden death here in the last 40 seconds if they can manage to get a squad wipe on a V Respawn. And Stumpy Nub, he hasn't stopped since he's picked up that bio pump. He is on the hunt. He's looking for Rukafelt. He's just taken down Stu, and it looks like he has a, a general idea of where Rukafelt might be. Yeah, that sonar usage, of course, very important too, uh, giving your team's locations. You can see Rukafelt there just kind of pulsing his trigger on his touch controller to keep that minigun, that, that cosmic ripper spun up so he doesn't have as much time when it goes to targeting. But he's getting picked away by two members of Danglers. It's not going to matter. He wow. finds one, he finds two, and he'll spread the point gap back out to three. Rukafelt did such a fantastic job there, buying time. He was in a one versus two scenario, just taking fire after fire from Danglers. He bought time, he hid. He was taking a lot of damage, but man, he bought so much time that in the end, it didn't matter for Danglers. You're absolutely right, Potter. And with that, V Respawn will take map number two and go up 2-1 in our series. Again, it's a best of five single elimination here for the finals. So if V Respawn manages to sink this next map, we're done. Danglers will be finished. We are done, and we're going into Dark Ice, and this is going to be V Respawn's map pick. And that does not bode well for Danglers, specifically because Danglers were in such a dominating lead from the beginning of that game, and they just kind of let things slip away from them. Uh, not sure what happened there. Yeah, I'm not either. Uh, it really, it, it seems like it was, again, kind of how that first map went, right? Like. V Respawn did manage to take a little bit more advantage this time around than they did with the first map. However, things were still very close there at the end. A little four or five point difference. That's not so bad. Not as bad as at least that second map where Danglers just completely walked away with it. But I can say that Dark Ice is actually one of Danglers' prefer... Or I'm sorry, not Dark Ice. We just played Dark Ice. The Factory. No. No, it would be the Dark it Ice. It is Dark yeah, Ice. Yeah, sorry. I'm right. I'm confused. I'm sorry. Don't don't call no me worries. sleepy. Call me confused for the rest of the day. Uh, but yeah, Dark Ice is also one of Dangler's favorites also. So they might not be too scared about this pick. And of course, on your screen, we have some replays going now of the match that was just finishing up. There's the kill from Rukavelt there towards the end. He, find, he found Stumpy and Pesky to find a three-point lead there and spread things out right at the final seconds. It Such was... accuracy from Rukafelt. I mean, they've got to be feeling good on the V respawn side of Absolutely. things. Absolutely. I mean, they were, again, they were down by, I believe, 6-0 or 5-0 at a certain point, and they clawed their way back into that game to eventually controlling the game and winning that game. So going into Dark Ice, that momentum, it's going to stick with them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And now I bet the pressure is definitely on those danglers. They are down there on the precipice of being knocked out in map four. What are they going to do? Can they control the tilt? Can they calm themselves down and refocus? Will they be ready to handle this next map against V Respawn? It is their choice. However, they took the choice of V Respawn away from them earlier today, just as V Respawn has taken both of Dangler's choices. It almost makes you wonder if they've come to some sort of agreement beforehand, like, hey, we're going to win each other's matches, go to the decider <laughs> and see who really is the best, right? Yeah. If you were in the server right now with your boys on Dangler's side of things, what would you be telling them? What, what, what words of encouragement or strategies do you have? Um, I think my words to them would just be shake it off, let it go. The last game was the last game, the round, uh, you know, that it is what it is. V Respawn took it, big deal. You're still in this thing. Get it together, focus up, and take it to them in the next map. Th that, that's my words. <laughs> Absolutely. And Dark Ice, the map that we're going to be running into here, it is a medium-sized map. It's not quite as big as Skulls and Guns as we just saw, but it's a lot bigger than Canyon Chase and, and Organic Belt. Uh, no, it's actually a bit smaller than those those maps. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a bit smaller than Canyon Chase Organic Belt, but it'll, it'll be more confined, you know, so it, it will play more into the aggression of Danglers. However, V Respawn's definitely showing that they're not afraid to get in there and get dirty. Also, so it could just be a straight-up brawl in the middle of the map for the entire thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I haven't seen much of uh, Dark Ice. I mean, this is th this map is not as common, I would say, no. as the other maps. No, not at all. And that's maybe maybe why it's like the fourth map of today, because people aren't really wanting to choose it. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe because everyone is just kind of so good at it that people want to avoid it to avoid a tough competition, right? Because I have here in my notes that both Danglers and V Respawn like this map. So this is anybody's game here in map four, but Danglers really need something here that are going to allow them to take the advantage because they need it. They're game down and a game on the line for the series. Absolutely. And on Dark Ice map, one difference that we're going to be seeing is there's not going to be any uh, rocket sh rocket launchers. No rocket rumble on this map. I doubt it. Yeah. On, on the last map, we did see it busted out, but there's just no respawn on the map itself. So it's 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 one one weapon that uh, that the players themselves can't be using. Yeah, to be fair, though, the rocket launcher is a hard weapon to be effective with as it does have a slow, slow tra uh, trajectory on the rounds and you can aim it. Uh, you can also two-hand it to make things a bit more accurate, and you get a bit of a scope to help guide it. Uh, but yeah, the round, once it leaves the tube, it is controllable by the player, aimable. <laughs> so yeah, that would be a nice weapon to see in a close quarters map, because that explosive damage area would be greater, or a greater chance of taking someone out. But I think the devs making that call of balance, they don't want to give people just a chance to spam explosives in order to clear out maps, right? So they want to balance things out and make players get in there, get dirty, get their hands working a bit. Absolutely. So the players are just getting ready here. We see uh, Ruka Felth on the V-Respawn. He's loosening up his muscles. It's good to see that the pressure isn't really getting them. It looks like these guys are having fun. That's right. And the Danglers are hopefully going in the words of Taylor Swift and shaking it off right now. <laughs> I'm hoping they're getting loosey-goosey as well. They need to pull this one back from the trenches. They've got themselves in a tough spot here. V-Respawn proving to be a, an NA champion at the moment. Yeah, I mean, both of these guys could potentially be. We've got uh, we've got that all NA finals. I mean, that's that's like a dream. You we and couldn't I, be we're, happier. Yeah, could we're we? like biased. We're so <laughs> biased, but I mean, that is it's great. It's great to see. Uh, it's great to see North America dominating. <laughs> yeah, Ryan over there telling us that we're just a bunch of yapping yanks, <laughs> calling out our, our our pride. But no, yeah, it it has been great. We are a little biased for our NA guys, but uh, yeah, it's it's been good. And you know, all teams have really been bringing the competition across the spectrum of games that we featured this weekend. The Echo teams were really bringing the heat. The Combat teams were bringing the heat. We've seen a lot of great action in Space Shakies. I mean, for God's sakes, we went to a sudden death in our very first round. Uh, the semifinals yesterday in Space Junkies. And I mean, man, oh man, things are really getting exciting. Onward was exciting last night with the upsets that we saw and the almost upsets of some Titans. I mean, I I'm still just kind of reeling from everything. Yeah, definitely. And this game, it just it has such a, a reminiscing feeling for me whenever I'm watching it. <laughs> I remember when I was playing Unreal Tournament when I was yeah. a little kid, just a long time ago, jumping through the servers and the maps. And the speed in, in those games always was so appealing to me. And now right. you're, you're flying around in space. Mm -hmm. So cool. So cool to see. It's time to put on that astronaut helmet, Potter, <laughs> and take it to the skies. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, we should be getting into that next map here at any moment. The referees are making sure all the players are good. Of course, we don't want anyone going into these rounds unprepared. Uh, but we will be bringing that action back with you here shortly. In the meantime, I think uh, Lovely Potter and I will just keep continuing to talk for you. Let's see. We should change the subject. Maybe we'll talk about our... Uh Talk about what, what? What do you like to do, Sleepy? What do I like to do? I yeah. like to VR. That's what I like to do. No, I I, I enjoy a lot of things uh, when I'm not working. I like to do media content for V Respawn. I do a bit of VR esports entertainment stuff with them, doing recaps of Onward tell on a weekly a, basis. Tell us about your yeah about your Discord community and things of that nature. I know you're very heavily involved in in this in VR league. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I I hate to take away from the game that we're currently on, but yeah, I mean, I also put in some work with the the Onward community very closely, uh, the community leagues that they have, who have been in good collaboration with ESL and the VR League over the last, I'd say about a year or so maybe. Uh, and things have been great and, and the community's loved it. We just love giving these people, our community members, every possible chance that they can to to come out to these events, get together, and really just enjoy, enjoy each other's company because it's really great that they, that they come together and they're just so friendly with one another. Yay! Oh. All right, but we are back to it. We're on map four. It's dark ice. Everyone loves the map. So who knows who's going to come out on top, Potter? We'll see. But Stumpy Nub going to come out strong oh with my. a frag. Pesky Cashew also. They're doing their dangler thing. 
and starting things out with a bang. Their dangler thing indeed. That was so fast. Such yes, quick reactions from danglers already up 2-0. This is great for them that this action happens so fast because they're going to be able to pick up that armor quickly and reset themselves and go hunting for re-respawn. I expect a lot of aggression coming out from danglers so that they can continue to control the pace. Yeah, I think when they do that though, they need to pr they need to pretty much push in right away. Rukafelth and Stumpy, or Pesky will get into it, or no, P Pesky will find Stu. Stumpy will find Pesky, or Rukafelt downstairs. And now we're at a 4 0, another squad wipe from Danglers. They're looking good on map four to keep us going into the decider. They certainly are. And like I said, I love that aggression coming out of Danglers. They understand that they they have the advantage right now. They can be the ones hunting, but Rukafelt has an answer. Oh, the damage mm. onto Stumpy. Stumpy's doing a good job, though. He's trying to run away, he's, he's trying to reset. His cover. Exactly. He's got to wait for his teammate to respawn here. Oh, but that sonar does not help him stay hidden for very long. Rukafelt's going to go on the chase now, and he does. Find stumping up with that Cosmic Rips, Ripper, Pesky Cashew, now going to have to try and play defensively until he can get back with his teammate. But no, he finds a nice what pulse. A shot. Plasma rifle shot onto Stu. He's looking for another onto Rukafelt, but no success just yet. A couple of sonar pops coming out there. Now it's in the tunnel. Rukafelt's going to be in trouble if he doesn't get himself out there. Here comes stumping up from the back. And is anyone going to be able to get this frag, or will they be able to stay safe? No, it looks like Rukafeld is going to go down, oh. but Stu is going to come out of nowhere, find Stumpy Nub. The refrags are out everywhere, but V Respawn will come out on top as Danglers have to go back to the tubes and respawn. We're into a 6-4 going into three minutes. Yeah, really unfortunate that Danglers missed so many shots there. They had every opportunity to close that one out and maintain their lead, but they gave res V Respawn an opening, and they certainly took it. Yeah, they sure did, but Stumpy coming back on the offensive. He's taking down Rukafeld. Stu going to grab him, but Pesky going to be able to get the immediate refrag. So Danglers now able to keep pace with the refrags. They're able to keep stepping up as the enemy catches up. They're keeping their points on the board, which is what they failed to do, I think, in the last round. They set that large lead. Then the other team started scoring points. Then they weren't able to, to recover. They certainly are. What a shot from Rukafeld. He shit. He landed both shots, hit the first one, did the damage, and finished them off. Wow. Such accuracy coming from this man. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And his, his accuracy by volume is actually very much working for them in the short-range maps. That speed with the pulse rifle or the plasma rifle is being very much handy to him. They've narrowed it down now between just two points. Danglers haven't been able to recover the frag as they have in the past, so now they're in a tight spot. Pesky Cash is going to take some damage. Stu's going to chase him in. Rukafelt will be there to back him up as well. Stumpy Nub will find Stu, though, thankfully, as Pesky Cash was getting himself into a tough fight. Now it's on to Rukafelt. Stumpy will find him as well. That's another squad wipe. It's back up a four point lead here, rolling into two minutes. Danglers on the advantage. They have the advantage indeed, and, and Stumpy Nub, you can see he's picking up even more armor. He hardly took a lot of damage in that encounter, which really bodes well for Danglers. He's got full armor. We just need Pesky to, to wait for these armor respawns and pick them up, and they're going to be in a really good spot moving forward. Yes, they really are. Here comes the sonar shot. Stumpy's looking for his next frag. He's going up to find Stu. Stu's calling it out. Looks like Rukavelt may actually try and take a backdoor and find a flank here, but he might find Pesky Cashew. And yes, Stumpy Nub will find Stu. Pesky's already focused in on Rukavelt. Will the kill come out? Stumpy's close in with this bio pump, and he does find another. Stumpy on fire right now, seven and three. But to be fair, Pesky also going seven and three. And uh, we got 13 kills on the board and six left. A minute and 22 left. And now it's all up to V Respawn. What can they do here? They have to recover seven kills now. I don't know if they can do it, Potter. I don't think they can either. We've got one minute remaining. They've got to go full on aggression. This is exactly what they need to, to try to posture, at least, for this comeback. And Rukafelt and Stu do answer, getting two quick frags. They need to keep hunting, though. Pull, push the aggression and push the issue and try to, try to make some sort of comeback here. Yeah, absolutely. They, they have to go hunting. They have absolutely no time to sit back on their heels and wait for Danglers because Danglers, oh, all they starting. have to do is, is, is just wind down the clock, right? So Danglers just need to stay safe. So if the respawn are aware that they just need to get aggressive and play the hunt, then they'll be fine. So the sonar shots are going to help out. Stumpy Nub is exposed. Pesky needs to get in there and help his team. Stu will find Stumpy with the bio pump though, and this is looking like a comeback. We could see V respawn here. 30 seconds left. They have enough time. Pesky needs to get hidden and fast. Surely not. They're, they've got to keep pushing the issue, keep going aggressive. They've gotten six kills in a row with no answer from Danglers. At this point, Stu and with another kill with 19 oh seconds my. left to go. There's they only need time. two more kills to tie this up, and then we might be in a sudden death situation. Danglers need to stay hidden here. They need to buy that, buy that clock. They have 10 seconds. Pesky Cashew's not even out of the tube. I think they're going to utilize that. They're going to stay as well hidden as they possibly can. Stu already taking a lot of damage from Stumpy, but he finds a bio pump kill. Wow. And Red Team, though, going to be able to close it out.
and Danglers will take their second map in Potter. We're going to the decider for the Space Junkies VR League Season 3 Finals. What are your thoughts? We are going the distance here to all five maps. Woo! What a good effort there from B Respawn, though. They were down by such a huge margin, but they were able to, to really determine what their winning condition is going to be and push that issue, and they they brought it back to one there, Sleepy. One yeah, kill could have I mean, been all the difference. I mean, I was having trouble calling that one. My heart was pounding. I thought <laughs> B Respawn was coming in, and they were going to slit the Danglers' throats there at the end, but thankfully, the Danglers were aware of their time. They played it to their advantage, and overall, they do take the map, and that'll put us into map number five coming up here in just a few moments, but let's take a quick look back at some of the replays. Pesky Cashew and Stumpy Nub both doing very well hot out of the gate, but then later on we'll see that Stu and Rukafelf come in with their own plans. There's another headshot from Pesky Cashew. Those guys just on fire with that Cosmic Ripper today. They certainly were on fire, and it seemed like V Respawn, it took them a little bit too long to really get into this match. We I saw agree. Danglers with such a demanding lead here at the half with 13-6, and this is where that comeback starts to happen. It starts to make us really think, is this possible? Surely they can't do this, but they certainly almost did. And here's a quick frag from Stu. The aggression coming out of Stu, it was it was pretty incredible. Stu knew exactly what he needed to do, and he got it done, and he was the start of that momentum sw swing, like you said. And man, that was really close. Danglers overexposed. They were, you know, V Respawn was on the hunt. They were constantly using their sonar, constantly looking for the position. So you know the Danglers were sweating there because they knew if they could delay it long enough, there wouldn't be enough time for them to respawn and for the other team to get another frag. But they were getting caught out because the V Respawn team was aggressive in their hunt today. Definitely. And going into this fifth map on Factory, the decider map here in the grand finals. I mean, V Respawn, I think they got to approach this a little bit, a little bit more aggressive, maybe right, right off to. the get the gate. They, they really, it just is taking them too long to get into each of these matches. Yeah, well, to be fair, this is the smallest, I believe, of all the maps, the closest range engagements, even at the longest range. It's not very far. Uh, let's see if I have the exact information on that. Yeah, I think 20 meters is the closest range of engagement sight lines, and then the longest being upwards of like 120, which really isn't that far if you consider some of the other maps that have, you know, 150, 180, some similar stats. But uh, here we go. We're into the map. It's factory. It's close quarters, so expect a lot of action very quickly as we will determine who's going to be our, our Space Junkies VR League Season 3 champions. Absolutely, we've got V Respawn coming in here right off the gate. Like we mentioned, they've got to show some aggression here, try to control the pace a little bit more. And here we are, Stu, with a great start to open up the round and stumping up, taking a lot of damage. He does answer onto Rukafelt and onto Stu with a quick double kill from stumping up. His bio pump has been on fire. Yeah, Stumpy Shield Shotgun game is nothing to be messed with, and he is going to probably utilize that very much here in this map because it will it will definitely lend to that. You know, one pump, one shot kills are definitely preferred when you're close in like this. Rukavelf trying to find that speed with the plasma rifle to get the kill. Him and Stu are now kind of tuned in on his position, but they better be careful. Stumpy Nub is waiting in the wings, and he will find Rukavelf. Will he be able to find Stu? No, Pesky finds Stu. And we're setting up to a 4-1 here in Factory. Dangler's taking the lead early on, but as we've seen, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, Potter. It doesn't, but you know, I think we respawn need to readjust here. Uh, Rukavelf has been picking up that plasma rifle, and although he's got a really nice shot, I think this close range isn't boding well for him. There we are. Rukafelt picks up the bio pump and he gets a double kill. So this is this is already that change and shift in pace. Yep. Hopefully this this bodes well for them and and they can they can turn things around for themselves. You're absolutely right. Here's some sonar usage already from Rukafelt as he tries to find those plasma rifle shots from long range. He doesn't want to get in too close to the Danglish. He knows they're dangerous and now they're together. So that's going to make them even worse. Stu going off on the flank though while Rukafelt holds him back. He's going to try and pop sonar to get some IDs, but he's got nothing right now. Now, there comes the sonar pop from Stumpy. I think Stu's coming in on his flank. Finally, no, the engagement's with Rukafelt. They don't know that Stu's coming. Here comes Stu now. Will he be able to find the frag? Stumpy will find Stu on the wings, and now it's Pesky and Rukafelt, and Pesky finds Rukafelt in the kill. It's a four-kill advantage to Danglers right now as we go just past the three-minute mark, Potter. Yeah, absolutely, and it looks like Rukafelt again with that plasma rifle. He was missing a lot of opportunity, opportunity shots there. And it, unfortunately, things just turn around with Danglers capitalizing on those missed shots, especially in this close range map, as you mentioned, you're going to get punished. Yeah, you really can't miss your shots when yeah. it comes to close range. Oh, there we are. Things turning around for Rukafelt. He hits another one. He nails that one. shot, too, which allows Stu to pick up the, the instant assist from the Rika Shaker. 
So things are swinging around here, but you can't be too careful. You cannot drop your guard. And you know, I saw something there that it, that kind of shocked me is that that slingshot that we just saw Stu kind of have in his view there. I would be using that. That explosive damage could really come in handy here on, on Factory. Definitely. That AoE splash damage can't be underestimated, specifically in these close quarters. I mean, it can potentially do damage to both your enemies and, uh -oh, at the same time. It looks like Rukafelth has gotten himself over entangled. Oh, no, that was Stu who's gotten himself over entangled with in the Dangler's corner of the map, he was by himself with two members of Dangler's right on top of each other. He was set up for failure, but he backed off and the Dangler's were able to evade. Now there's an engagement between Stu and Stumpy Nub. Will he find it? There's the Sonar Poppy, knows where they are. Shield's out. Nobody able to connect and find the frag just yet, though. We're still locked in at seven to five here with Dangler's holding the advantage for the moment. And it looks like both teams here have slowed things Oof. down, but as I say that, Stu responds and opens up the round, and they get a quick double kill, and this ties things up at 7-7. Seven, seven. We've got a minute and a half left in the round here, Sleepy. Look at their scores, too. 4-3, 3-4, 4 3, three, four, four, three, three, oh four. They're my. mirroring each other right now. This is insane. These two teams could not be more evenly matched here. Pesky Cashew taking some damage, but Stumpy Double finds Stu in the wings. Pesky's going to retreat to try and get back with his teammate as Rukafelt chases him down. Will he get the frag? Stumpy Nub's coming in hot, but will he get there in time? Wow, and Dangler's doing a really fantastic job disengaging there. Ooh. And as I say that, Stumpy Nub Finds gives two. Rukafelt two almost easy frags. They just kind of went into his face. Oh, man, I think that they underestimated uh, Rukafelt's bio pump there. Maybe they thought he still had that plasma rifle and they were trying to take advantages, but Rukafelt punishes them so fast there. Yeah, and they've got the one-point advantage. We're under a minute left now. The pressure is on. Danglers have been leading this match the entire time so far. Now they're down a point, and, the, and it looks like the respawn's trying to avoid confrontation at this point. They really don't want to give up. They, if anything, they want to waste time so that that spawn timer comes into effect. But no, Stu's going to find two more, and it looks like the respawn's going to open up the lead just a bit. Rukafelt oh, finding pesky, pesky Cashew. And that looks like it's going to be it. We're down to 15 seconds. I don't believe there is just enough time to get those refrags. So it looks like V Respawn has got this you one in what? a nice, tidy basket. You know what? 10 seconds, though. 10 seconds is only three kills. They could potentially make this happen. But Rukafelt says, no, not today. Him and Stu yeah. clean it out and get another double kill, just extending their lead even further. Yep, and that will be it, ladies and gentlemen. V Respawn wow. are going to be your VR League Season 3 Finals champions. And they're going to go home with that lovely trophy standing down there on